Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. On this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to talk about Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest happening October 7th through the 9th, 2016 at the Denver Marriott Tech Center Hotel in Denver, Colorado. Now, this one's going to be the most unique Can Jam at RMAF we've ever had. Let me explain. The hotel was undergoing renovations, I think, for about the last year. They were supposed to be completed in time for RMAF. As it turned out, for whatever reason, those renovations will not be completed in time for RMAF. What that means, as I understand it, is that about half the hotel will be unavailable to us, closed. Uh, that means a lot of exhibits will have to be moved, um, including the huge can jam at RMAF space. Um, but fear not, because right now, as we speak, there are temporary structures being constructed in front of the hotel, including a huge pavilion to house can jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. So yes, we'll be in a huge temporary pavilion this year. It will be a little strange, but here's the thing. This is actually the biggest can jam at RMAF we've ever had. We have more exhibitors coming from more places than we have ever had before at this event. So as strange as it is, it's going to be our biggest one ever, and I think it's going to be an awful lot of fun and one to remember for sure. So anyways, in this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to tell you some of the things you can hear and see at Can Jam at RMAF this year, so definitely stay tuned. I think Sony is at its best when it's equal parts engineering and artisan. For example, many Sony aficionados consider Sony's now vintage MDR R10 the best Sony headphone ever made. Also, you Sony enthusiasts, think of the Sony SCD1 SACD CD player. That's what I mean. Sony at its best with products that sounded and felt like equal parts engineering and artisanship. At CanJam at RMAF, Sony is going to be showing products from their new flagship signature series, a series that includes the new flagship headphone MDR Z1R, two signature series Walkman models, and a new desktop headphone app DAC combo. We have the MDR Z1R and the flagship Walkman NWWM1Z here, and I have to say that both are a strong reflection, a return to products like the R10 or the SCD1, equal parts engineering and artisanship. When Sony first brought one of the more advanced prototypes to HeadFi HQ, we compared it to the Sony MDR Z7, and my first comment was that I'd never really noticed the sound of the ear cup from the Z7 until I heard the Z1R. In other words, the presence of cup resonance in the Z7 only became evident to me by the absence of it in the Z1R. Sony's Naotaka Sonoda and Shunsuke Shiomi both smiled when I said this, as they said much effort had been made to develop a multi-layer housing for the Z1R and ear cup to eliminate resonance and control the air resistance, so they were glad that it was the first thing I noticed. The Sony MDR Z1R sound is full, robust. The bass is more extended and more detailed than the MDR Z7s. As I understand it, a key inspiration behind its sound profile was the sound of high-end loudspeaker studio monitors in a studio environment. As audiophile headphones go, it's on the bassier side, but beautiful sounding, and the build quality is incredible. I've been using the Z1R with the flagship Walkman NWWM1Z. This portable player is a purest player, with no Wi-Fi even, so if streaming is a priority, look elsewhere. The WM1Z has a lush layered sound with gorgeous imaging, and no other portable player I've yet heard sounds better playing DSD. The WM1Z also allows a lot of customizations inside, and I have a saved profile that I use about half the time in which I've EQ'd down the Z1R's bass a bit. The Z1R responds fantastically to EQing, by the way. The Walkman WM1Z has insane battery life, which is a huge plus for me. Sony rates battery life with continuous music playback at 11 hours if you're playing DSD 11.2 MHz files. If that's the worst case scenario, I'm not too worried about it. A, it's 11 hours. B, I don't think I have any 11.2 MHz DSD files. But it is rated for 26 hours if playing 24192 FLAC and 33 hours with MP3. Now, based on my use of it so far with mixed formats, I'd say they're being fair with these ratings. I only charge it every few days tops, and I'd estimate I'm getting around 20 plus hours from a full charge. Anyway, look for the gorgeous new Signature Series from Sony and many other Sony products at the Sony exhibit at Can Jam at RMAF. Fostex and American Music and Sound will be at Can Jam at RMAF showing off the Fostex lineup. This is the Fostex TH610, which is a departure from the TH600 that came before it, the 610 having a richer sounding tonal balance with robust bass and meaty mid-range, but maintaining enough sparkle up top to still be a Fostex TH model. Another new Fostex product to check out at CanJam is the new Fostex HPA4BL, which is the next generation upgrade of the Fostex HPA4 DAC amp combo. The new HPA4BL adds a 4-pin XLR balanced headphone output, and instead of running from USB bus power, it now uses a 12-volt wall power supply. The new HPA4BL also has triple the maximum output of its predecessor. 
At the Fostex and American Music and Sound Exhibit, I'm most excited about this. This is the new Fostex TE100. And you sharp-eyed high-end IEM experts are probably thinking from the close-up photos that this looks a lot like a Fittier IEM. That's because Fostex worked with Fittier to co-develop the TE100. Why am I so excited about it? Well, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Fittier's products and of Keita Suyama of Fittier. And Fittier products are not easy to get without a trip to Asia, and yet they make some of the best sounding, most coveted in-ears on the market. My Fittier MH334 Customs are still among my favorites, but I had to get fitted for these in Tokyo. With the Fostex TE100, Fostex is finally bringing Fittier's magic across the ocean. The TE100 is a dynamic, balanced armature hybrid. I believe Fostex developed the dynamic driver, and Fittier engineered the TE100's air-controlled acoustic tuning. With its punchy, resolving, yet smooth sound, the TE100 is something you should definitely listen to at the Fostex and American Music and Sound Exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. Hi-Fi Man will be at CanJam at RMAF, and they'll have some serious firepower, as always. One of my favorite non-electrostatic headphones since its release has been the Hi-Fi Man HE1000. Hi-Fi Man recently announced version 2 of the HE1000, which incorporates an improved headband design to accommodate a wider range of head sizes, lighter weight down to 420 grams from 480 grams, better ear pads with the skin-touching side of the pads updated from velour to polyester, which Hi-Fi Man says increases transparency. Also, the beveled ear pads are thicker with a larger asymmetrical angle. The ear cups themselves have been slimmed down with the wood outer rim thickness going from 14 millimeters to 11 millimeters. And finally, the HE1000 version 2 incorporates significantly improved cables with a new three core cable design, which Hi-Fi Man claims improves sound quality. The HE1000 version 2 just arrived at HeadFi HQ, so we haven't had a chance yet to break it in and compare it to the original HE1000, but we'll do that very soon. Now the Edition X version 2 hasn't arrived at HeadFi HQ yet, so this is still the version 1, but the Edition X version 2 also has the improved headband and ear pads and its yokes have been updated from plastic to metal. Hi-Fi Man will also be exhibiting their new Super Mini portable digital audio player. The player features expandable memory up to 256 gigs via micro SD card. The Super Mini only weighs 2.4 ounces. It can output up to 320 milliwatts into 32 ohms from its balanced output. The Super Mini's battery life is rated at 22 hours. I haven't yet used the Super Mini, but I'm looking forward to trying it at CanJam. Now make sure to check out the Hi-Fi Man HE1000 version 2, Edition X version 2, the Super Mini portable digital audio player, and the rest of the Hi-Fi Man line at their exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. Attention exhibitors and DIYers, this segment is for you. Audio Precision will be doing their plug fest again at RMAF this year, where they'll have three audio testing stations that will allow them to test and measure just about anything audio related that you'd want to have tested. They'll have an Audio Precision APX515 audio analyzer setup, along with a Gross 45CA like this one here, an ear and cheek simulator and other mics to do electroacoustic test and measurement. They'll also have their new APX1701 transducer test interface for loudspeaker, headphone, and microphone measurement. The APX1701 can drive loudspeakers and headphones with dedicated amplifiers. It enables easy impedance measurements and provides power to measurement microphones and microphones under test. Its functions integrate with the APX500 audio measurement software and the APX analyzers. They'll also have Audio Precision's flagship APX555 audio analyzer set up to measure anything with low noise floors, like Precision DAX, for example, in the digital realm or the analog realm. We have an Audio Precision APX555 here at HeadFi HQ that we're increasingly employing to do more and more audio measurements. You've probably seen this in our videos and on the forum, and you'll see a lot more of it from us over time. The APX555 has the lowest residual total harmonic distortion plus noise of any analyzer available. Can do jitter generation and analysis, has 1 MHz bandwidth, does up to 1.2 million point FFTs, and so much more. It's an incredible analyzer. Finally, Audio Precision will also have one of their APX525 analyzers on a mobile cart to go to exhibitor suites if the device that you want to test is too big or heavy to bring to Audio Precision suite. If you want to test your gear, make sure to visit Audio Precision in RMAF Suite 3014. These are the Odyssey iSign 10 and iSign 20 full range planar magnetic in-ear headphones. They're incredible, and they're my pick for the most must-hear new products at CanJam at RMAF this year. I obviously don't need to point out that these iSigns are unique in their design. That's obvious at first sight. The large part of the iSign's body right here houses a miniaturized full range planar magnetic driver that uses technologies that they've incorporated into their current line of full size headphones. Now, while it's a miniaturized take on a full-size headphone driver, the diaphragm has a huge radiating area for an in-ear headphone. To channel that large planar wave to the ear tip, Odyssey developed a carefully designed waveguide structure inside the sound port to improve phase, frequency response, and reduce diffraction, resulting in improved acoustic loading, improved reflection characteristics, and decreased distortion. 
Odyssey posted distortion plots on HeadFi's forums that show the eye sign's vanishingly low distortion even at ear-bleedingly high sound pressure levels. The sound from these Odyssey eye signs is effortless with deep extended bass extension, very even tuned mid-range, and treble extension for miles. The sound presentation is not that of your typical in-ear monitors because the eye sign is a semi-open design and it sounds more like an open back over-ear headphone to me than an in-ear, no doubt owing to that semi-open design and those large surface area diaphragms. It presents with an airy image that breathes much more freely than closed in-ears. So if you're not in need of a closed isolating in-ear monitor, the Odyssey eye sign easily ranks as among the very best sounding in-ear headphones in the world. What the iSign is for me is essentially a pocket-sized, full-size, semi-open headphone. I've been listening to the iSign mostly directly from my iPhone using the Odyssey Cypher lightning cable and using the Odyssey iOS app's equalizer from time to time to fine-tune depending on what I'm listening to. And the iSign responds extremely well to EQing if you're so inclined. Sometime after we did our HeadFi TV episode about Shure's flagship electrostatic in-ear monitors, Odyssey CEO Sankarthi Agasamadram told me Odyssey was working on a product that I might find similarly impressive. I have to agree. With the iSign 10 and iSign 20, Odyssey has created what in the current market space is a unique product in its own unique category that sounds phenomenal. If you're able to make it to CanJam at RMAF, then a stop at Odyssey's exhibit should be one of your highest priorities. Of course, at their exhibit, Odyssey will also have their full range of LCD, EL8, and Sign headphones too. Shit Audio is going to be joining us in Denver, and while they'll have their entire line of products on exhibit, I'm going to focus on these two high-value pieces. This is the Shit Audio Jotunheim, which is a powerful, fully balanced desktop headphone amplifier to which can be added either a USB DAC module or a moving magnet phono preamp module. We did an entire episode of HeadFi TV recently dedicated entirely to the new Shit Audio Jotunheim, so please watch that if you want to learn more about the Jotunheim. Simply put though, the Jotunheim is one of the most versatile, high-powered desktop headphone amps we've used, with a delicate touch and low self-noise to drive my most sensitive in-ear monitors beautifully, yet capable of going beast mode with up to 7,500 milliwatts of maximum power in the 16 ohms and 5,000 milliwatts in the 32 ohms. If you've been interested in trying a multi-bit DAC but wince when you see the prices of most of the available multi-bit DACs, then make sure to visit Shit's exhibit to check out the Modi Multi-Bit. This is Shit's entry-level multi-bit DAC using the analog device's AD5547. The Modi Multi-Bit also uses Shit's unique closed-form digital filter. What's the price of the Modi Multi-Bit? 249 bucks. Make sure to stop by Shit's exhibit at CanJam at RMAF to hear the Modi Multi-Bit, the Jotunheim, and the rest of their product line. Oh, and also, SHIT will have a separate exhibit room in the main RMAF exhibit area in the hotel featuring a loudspeaker driving system, the details for which I don't currently have. So make sure to visit both of SHIT's exhibits at RMAF and CanJam at RMAF. Sennheiser will be joining us in Denver, and I expect they'll be showing their flagship Sennheiser HD800S. While the HD800S was first shown in Japan late last year, there are still many of you who haven't yet had a chance to hear it. So make sure to give the HD800S a listen in Denver to see if you prefer the original HD800 or the newer HD800S, still two of the top electrodynamic headphones ever in my opinion. I prefer the Sennheiser HD800S. I travel quite a lot, so it's not unusual for me to spend more time on airplanes than I do in cars. As a result, I consider good active noise canceling headphones a necessary part of my carry-on kit, and my Bose QC35 may have met its match. Sennheiser's new wireless PXC550 is a beast of a travel headphone, and first impressions show it sounding better with music to me than my Bose. The PXC550 is loaded with technology like adaptive active noise canceling, talk through, up to 30 hours of battery life, capacitive touch controls, and much more. If you travel as much, or more than, I do, definitely audition the new PXC550 at Sennheiser's exhibit. Sennheiser also just recently announced the next generation of its very popular HD500 series line of headphones with the HD559, HD569, 579, and the HD599. These recently arrived at HeadFi HQ, and perhaps the one I'm most excited about is the HD569. Why? Because it's a closed back headphone with performance befitting the HD500 series of headphones, but it's closed. Now, solid performing, high performance closed back headphones for under 200 bucks are not a dime a dozen. And to my ears, Sennheiser has delivered big time with the HD569. Make sure to listen to it and the rest of the next generation HD500 series headphones at Sennheiser's exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. JH Audio and Astell and Kern are both exhibiting at CanJam at RMAF this year with their exhibits right next to each other. In Denver, JH Audio will be unveiling the next generation of the JH16 called the JH16 V2. 
Major upgrades come with the new JH16 V2, including moving to four high-frequency balanced armature drivers per side from two, so it now has quad-low, dual-mid, quad-high drivers. The new JH16 V2 now also has the base adjustment controls originally developed for the Siren series models, with base adjustment range from zero to plus 10 decibels. The JH16 V2 now also has a triple bore design with the Freak Phase Steel Tube Waveguide in it. You can hear and see the JH16 V2, also the JH13 V2, and the Siren Series line of in-ears at JH Audio's exhibit. At CanJam, JH Audio and Astell and Kern are also introducing together a new affordable Siren Series Universal Fit model called Michelle. Jerry Harvey's goal with Michelle was to use as much of their technology as possible at an affordable price. With three balanced armature drivers per side, Michelle is a three-way design, single low, single mid, single high drivers. Within her 3D printed shell, one of the technologies incorporated into her is JH Audio's Freak Phase Time Phase Waveguide. I have a feeling that at its price and performance, Michelle is going to be one of the most popular universal fit in-ears at or around its price in our community. Astel and Kern is making a big announcement today, and they'll be debuting it at CanJam at RMAF. I'm talking about Tidal streaming support for their Wi-Fi equipped players. Yay! I'm a big fan of Tidal, and I, like many of you, have been begging Astel and Kern for this. The specific models that will be gaining Tidal support via firmware updates are the AK300 series, so the AK300, AK320, and the AK380 models. The AK70 and the AK240 will also be getting it, and the AK102 and the AK122 are also getting Tidal support. I've been using the beta firmware on the AK380, and I have to say it's renewed my love for what is still one of my top reference portable players in this AK380. And I'm looking forward to also installing it on my favorite compact player, the AK70. Astel and Kern will also be showing their new AKXB10, which allows you to turn any headphone into a wireless headphone. It has Aptex HD, which allows it to support 24-bit high-quality data wirelessly. It also has a built-in microphone for telephony, and even has a balanced output and works with iOS, Android, and any computer with Bluetooth support. I'm looking forward to getting the XB10. We don't have one here yet. Finally, make sure to check out Astel and Kern's AK Recorder. The AK Recorder is a module that turns your AK300 series player into a high-resolution professional-grade recorder. This is the module here with an AK380 sitting atop it. Now, it has mic and line inputs as well as an AES-EBU digital input. With the AK Recorder and a companion player, you can record live music via microphones, do high-res LP recording if you're into needle drops, or record from digital signals from studio consoles. You can wirelessly control it via a smartphone or tablet with an app that supports up to four AK Recorders. The AK Recorder is also the first portable recorder product to support recording in 5.6 MHz DSD, and it can also record in PCM up to 32384. There's also an optional professional grade AK stereo mic kit made in a collaboration with world class microphone maker DPA from Denmark that includes two of DPA's SC4061 microphones. This is the setup right here you're looking at. These are the optional DPA mics and you can see just what a really cool compact setup it is when you put it all together and just an amazing professional recording rig. We are actually considering using this rig here at HeadFi HQ as we revisit the idea of maybe doing some audio only podcasts again. And I'm also having a growing interest in recording live music. Anyway, make sure to stop by JH Audio's and Astel and Kern's exhibits located next to each other at CanJam at RMAF. FIO, born for music and happy since 2007. That's FIO's slogan and I love it. It makes me smile every time I read it printed on their boxes or on their website. It's a remarkably cheery motto for a company that takes audio so seriously. One of the companies in our industry that has most redefined value for the dollar. Now, FIO doesn't try to push the boundaries of high-end audio, but they do try to put as much high-end audio into super affordable products as they can, and they become immensely popular in our community for all their enthusiasm, effort, engineering, and the resulting value. At CanJam at RMAF, FIO will be showing their brand new X1 second generation ultra portable digital audio player. The X1 supports up to 256 gigs of external storage via microSD and can play high res files up to 24192. It has instant on with a deep sleep mode that allows up to 15 days of standby. The output connector serves as both headphone and line out, and the volume control is a digital potentiometer with 100 steps. The X1 second gen also has Bluetooth 4.0. Battery life is rated by FIO at 12 hours with headphones and 15 hours on Bluetooth. Seriously, for the price, how can we not be impressed? FIO will also have their new A5 portable amplifier at the show, which is an upgrade of their much-loved FIO E12A. The new A5 uses the Muses O2 and LME 49600 chips and has lower distortion, nearly double the output power, an 84% increase in peak output voltage, and a 32% increase in supply voltage. And even with all that power on tap, 
I was happy to plug my uber-sensitive Fittier MH334 Customs into it and hear no self-noise at all in low gain mode. And then to play music and hear Tedeschi Trucks Band with crystal clarity and punch. Anyway, FIA will have the X1 second generation, A5 portable amplifier, and a whole lot of other high-value products at their exhibit at CanJam at RMAF, so make sure to visit them. Cord Electronics will be visiting from the UK, and while I imagine they'll have a lot of their product lineup at CanJam, I just wanted to focus on these two for now as they're the absolute best products that I've heard in the respective categories so far. Now the big one is the Cord Dave, of course, and it is for me a sort of sonic temple because it's simply the best digital source component I've run in various rigs, presenting layers and layers of detail and imaging, incredible resolution, just gorgeous sounding. Now whether used as a standalone DAC or as a self-contained DAC amp desktop system, it's the current standard setter for me. Now I'm showing it here with the Sony MDR-Z1R as they sound gorgeous together, but I could have chosen any number of other premium headphones, in-ear or over-ear because Dave has made just about anything I've plugged into it sound like it was at its best. Now, in case such things matter to you, the Dave's measured performance is also out of this world. The best we've so far seen here on our Audio Precision APX 555 audio analyzer. But most importantly, it's Dave's sound that gets me. Anyway, look for Dave at Cord's exhibit, plug your favorite headphones into it, and let us know what you think. Now, this little one here is the Mojo, of course, very, very popular on HeadFi. Of the many portable DAC app combos I've used, the Mojo has, like the Dave, been the standard setter for me in its category. Personally, I prefer the sound of the Mojo to its predecessor Hugo, the more expensive Hugo being my previous portable standard. Like the Dave, the Mojo's measured performance is so far the best I've seen in its category. Speaking of Mojo, Cord Electronics will also be showing their new cable accessory pack for the Mojo, which includes a wide selection of cables and adapters to give Mojo compatibility with a wide range of partnering devices. Among the many things in the kit is Cord's first ever add-on Mojo module. The new USB adapter block module makes connecting Mojo with an OTG micro USB cable or lightning to USB camera adapter cable much simpler. The module attaches directly to the Mojo's inputs as an extension of the device, and a hollow recess in the module houses the bulky end of Apple's Lightning to USB cable or Android Type OTG cables. It also cleanly extends the length of the Mojo to make it a better stack fit with a lot of the large digital audio players and smartphones that are so popular today. Anyway, make sure to visit Cord Electronics Exhibit at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. I'm always thrilled when COS exhibits at our CanJam events, as COS was, for many audiophile old-timers, the first quality headphones they owned. In Denver this year at the COS exhibit, look for their long-standing flagship COS ESP950 electrostatic headphone system. At its retail price of $1,000, you get the full-size electrostatic headphones and the companion amp. The ESP950 system is a great way to get started with electrostats and impressive enough to be a top rig for many. One of Koss's headphones that I consider a sleeper is their Pro 4S full-size studio monitors. I'm surprised these aren't talked about more at HeadFi when it comes to discussing affordable closed-back full-size headphones with a flatter tonal balance. I know a lot of people here first think of Sony and Audio-Technica when shopping for this class of headphones. Make sure to throw these Pro 4S's into the mix too. Koss will also be exhibiting their upcoming Koss Porta Pro Limited Edition colors. This is the black and gold limited edition, which is pretty dapper in my opinion. But me, I dig the beige ones. Now Joe calls this old computer beige, but I dig the retro stole it from the library look. The Koss Porta Pro is a classic for a reason. It still sounds awesome for the price, even in the face of countless more modern looking competitors. I love my Porta Pro, and I'll be picking up both the new limited edition colors as soon as they're available. Make sure to visit COS at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest this year. Focal will be joining us from France to show off their new Focal Iliar and Utopia headphones. We did an entire HeadFi TV episode about them because they're two just very incredible electrodynamic headphones, two of the best ever made. And there's so much uniqueness and innovation in their drivers especially. Now, because we did an entire episode, I'm not going to go into any greater detail about them. But they're not easy to get a hold of to listen to because, simply put, Focal can't make them fast enough to meet the demand. So CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest is going to probably be one of your better opportunities to have a chance to sit down and listen to the Focal Iliar and Utopia. Now, I actually feel sorry for this Focal little guy over here. This is the Focal Listen. Um, to be the sibling of these two headphones can't be easy. They cast giant shadows from which he doesn't seem to often come out of. <laughs> we, there, he's not talked about very often on HeadFi um, or anywhere else for that matter, but it's unfortunate because I think the Focal Listen is a very good, affordable, closed back headphone for on the go use or even desktop use if you need a closed headphone. But to be the sibling of these, again, very difficult. But if you're looking for a good closed back headphone that's affordable, much more affordable than either of these, check out the Focal Listen at the Focal Exhibit because, again, 
a wonderful headphone, just living in some really, really big shadows. Noble Audio will be exhibiting at Can Jam at RMAF, and if tradition holds, you won't have a hard time finding them. They usually have a huge exhibit, and they'll be showing their new co-flagship in-ear monitor called the Katana. Now, in terms of tonal balance, I think most would agree that here, the Katana, that it's perhaps the most reference-type sound signature of any of Noble's in-ears, the one that might be most at home in a studio monitoring role of all of the Nobles. Now, I think the Katana may be the most resolving in-ear monitor yet from Noble. Fast, airy, extended top end, but still a nice lush mid-range. Now, the other Noble co-flagship is the Kaiser 10, which I think a lot of you are familiar with. The warm, smooth Kaiser 10 is probably one of the most popular ultra-high-end universal fit flagships in our community. And between it and the Katana, the K10 is still more consistent with my current preferences, so it gets the slight nod from me between the two flagships. Now listen to both at the Noble exhibit in Denver, and then tell me what you think, because I'd be curious. Of course, Noble will also have the rest of their Universal Fit lineup there, which you can see here in front of me, including the Django, Dulce Bass, Savant, Savannah, and Trident. And don't forget that what put Noble on the map in the first place are their gorgeous custom in-ear monitors, which they still offer, so make sure to check out their custom IEMs at the Noble exhibit, Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. CMF Headphones will be at Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, and we happen to have Zach Merbach from ZMF Headphones here at HeadFi HQ visiting, so I wanted to let Zach tell you what they're going to be bringing to Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Hey, everybody. So we have two headphones that we're coming out with here, both with the same chassis. This one, which is called the Atticus, and its sister headphone that uses the same chassis, the Icon. The difference between the two models is that this one has a polyethylene driver, and the other one will have paddock wood and feature a biocellulose driver. Uh, one thing we're really excited about is that this is our first proprietary design in a headphone. And as you can see, all the parts are all ZMF all around, including our padding, the wood cups, and our chassis. So one other thing you will find at the ZMF headphones exhibit this year at RMAF is the Metrum DAC line. We're really excited about the Metrum DACs as they are R2R ladder DAC designed with their own proprietary chip that is not used in any other devices. The three DACs that you will be seeing there are this, which is the Metrum Musette, which is a single-ended design, the Metrum Menwet, which is balanced and single-ended, as well as the Metrum Pavane, which is their flagship DAC, uh, which features a fully balanced design. So hopefully we'll see everybody at CanJam RMAF this year at the ZMF headphones exhibit. We'll have the ZMF Atticus and Icon dynamic driver headphones and the Metrum DAC line. In Denver this year, West Tone is actually exhibiting at two entirely separate exhibits within the CanJam area, so make sure to visit both. Now one of their two exhibits will be entirely dedicated to their brand new flagship 8-driver Universal Fit Westone W80, which was just announced. The W80 has eight balanced armature drivers and a dual base, dual mid, quad high, three-way crossover configuration. First impressions? Very, very good. Very detailed, rich sound, and precise, impressive imaging. Also very cool is the way they've packaged the W80. Instead of a traditional monitor vault, it comes with this very nice zip-up case. Now inside of this larger case is this smaller zip-up case for pocket carry. Now also knowing that high-end in-ear enthusiasts will often upgrade their cables to maximize sound and comfort, Westone decided to do that for you with the W80. The W80 actually includes this ALO Audio Reference 8 cable that has an actual retail value of around $300. I love that they're including this. Now this one is a must here, so stop by Westone's dedicated Westone W80 exhibit at CanJam. Westone's second exhibit will have the rest of their W line as well as their custom in-ear monitors, and so they'll also be taking ear impressions at that exhibit. Westone's custom ES60 flagship, their custom flagship, remains one of the best performing custom in-ears I've heard, so listen to that if you can. Make sure to visit both of Westone's exhibits at CanJam at RMAF this year. iFi Audio's products are very popular in our community, and what has made iFi so popular is their high value, affordably priced portable electronics and small form factor desktop components. Now, however, iFi is also going more upmarket. This is the iFi Audio Pro iCan, the first component in what will be a pro series of iFi gear, and it's so feature packed that I couldn't possibly get into everything about it in the time allotted. Here are a few key takeaways, though. iFi calls the Pro iCan a studio grade headphone amplifier and audiophile line stage. In a unique twist, the Pro iCan has two individual solid state and tube amplification sections that you can select on the fly. The tube section in the Pro iCan uses two General Electric 5670 tubes. What's also cool is that when you're listening to the tube amp, there are two settings, 
Tube and Tube Plus, allowing you to play with the trade-off between the tube's natural harmonics and transient performance. As a tube amp aficionado, I dig this flexibility. The solid state amp section of the Pro ICANN is a fully discrete Class A design. There's just so much to cover. The Pro ICANN has almost too many options. Very quickly, some of the other features include something called 3D holographic sound for headphones that they claim is substantially better than standard crossfeed. There's something called X-Base Correction System, providing a minimum of 12 decibels of boost at 10 Hz, 20 Hz, or 40 Hz. There are three gain settings with maximum output power of 4800 milliwatts in single ended mode and 14,000 milliwatts in balanced mode, both in the 16 ohms. Make sure to check out the iFi Pro ICANN at CanJam, as well as the rest of the iFi line. Moon Audio is exhibited at just about every major event we've had since 2006, and they're going to be joining us at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest 2016. As you can see, I have Drew Baird from Moon Audio here with me at HeadFi HQ, which we're really excited to have him here visiting us. Now, Moon Audio's exhibit at, at CanJam, which I've said before many times, is always like a show within a show. They always bring so much gear that you can test out so many different combinations of gear, headphones, amps, DACs, that, like I say, it's like a show within a show. So I'm going to let him tell you this time what they'll be bringing to Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Go ahead, Drew. Thanks, Jude. Really excited to be here at the uh, HeadFi headquarters. And we're really excited to be at Can Jam again this year. We'll have our uh, Inspire Dragon IHA-1 headphone amp, which we're just won a Golden Ear Award from Absolute Sound. We're really stoked about that. Uh, we're also going to have a lot of new headphones that some of you are really trying to get to listen to these days, and some of them are very hard to get, like the Focals. Uh, we'll have both the Utopia and the Eliar at our table with our Dragon cables. We'll have the new uh, version 2 of the HE-1000 from Hi-Fi Man. Uh, Mr. Speakers will be there, and, and, and we'll have his headphones at our table as well. We'll have the Ether Flow and the Ether C Flow. We'll also have a lot of cord electronics at the table. We'll have their, of course, Hugo TT, as you see it here. We'll have the regular smaller Hugo, as well as the Mojo and all the new accessory packs and cases for the Mojo for you to look at. As well as all of these electronics, we'll also have plenty of Moon Audio Dragon cables. For all the headphones, they'll all be connected up to the amps with associated Dragon cables. We'll have portable cables for all the portable devices, such as the Astell and Kearns, uh, the, the Onkyo devices, the Questile devices. Uh, we're really excited to have the Shure KSE 1500 electrostatic IEM system. If you haven't heard that, I recommend stopping by for that as well. We're also going to have a couple of new products. We've just picked up Unison Research from Italy. Uh, we'll have their fully Class A all-tube design headphone amp, which also has internally a USB DAC. Uh, it's DSD capable, uh, and we're very excited to have brought them on board here at Moon Audio. We're also really excited to have the Orander A10. It's a new product from Orander that's uh, a little bit different than their normal media servers. Now they're actually including a DAC internally with the piece. It's got a four terabyte hard drive. They're still implementing the buffer solid state drive, but now they're doing all the D to A processing in internal of the piece. We'll also have their N100 music server, as well as their portable flow, which is capable of installing a uh, internal SSD drive for any time you've got a tablet that only has one USB input and no ability to connect an external hard drive to host all your USB audio. Uh, so we're really excited to be at CanJam again this year and hope to see you soon. Biodynamic will be at CanJam at RMAF 2016 and probably equipped to show you their full headphone line. This is their flagship, the Biodynamic T1 second generation with a bit more warmth and a little more bass than its predecessor T1. Also look for their Biodynamic T5P second generation, which I'm looking forward to hearing again at CanJam, as my first impression of it at CanJam Singapore was fantastic, also with more tonal richness than its predecessor. This is the Biodynamic DT1770 Pro, their closed back studio headphone. I think it might be my choice for the best value in their extensive line. It is, however, facing stiff competition from its newest sibling, the DT1990 Pro, which is their open back studio headphone. It's essentially the open back counterpart to the DT1770 Pro, and it's also a 250 ohm headphone. Now, something Biodynamic is doing with the DT1990 that I think is very cool is offering two different tunings in the box in the form of two different sets of ear pads. One set is intended to provide a more analytical, more neutral sound. The other set gives the DT1990 what Biodynamic calls a slight bass boost. I prefer the richer sounding ear pads myself, and that's why I keep them mounted here on the DT1990. They'll have even more there, so make sure to check out Biodynamic's exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. 
Cavalli Audio will be exhibiting at Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. And as you can see, I have Warren Chi, better known on the forums as Warren Peachy. I know a lot of you know him. He's the CEO of Cavalli Audio. And since he's visiting HeadFi HQ, I thought I'd let him tell you what Cavalli Audio will be showing at Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest this year. Thanks, Jude. So, uh, we'll start off with our Liquid Carbon 2.0. This is the second and final run of liquid carbons we have out there. As many of you know, this is the one with the updated power stage. So it, it's uh, meant to be quieter in single-ended mode. But some people have field tested it and told us that it actually sounds better in balance as well. Uh, we didn't intend for that, but you know, we'd love for you to give it a listen and let us know if you think that's true. Um, in any case, we will have the liquid carbon 2.0 at uh, Tanjam at Rocky Mountain. And we should have a few units for sale there as well. In addition to that, we should also have two or three prototypes of prototype units of our liquid tungsten, which is our new flagship tube amp, pure tube amp. It's not a hybrid. Um, this has been a big hit at Tanjam SoCal at uh, various meets and, and smaller events, and also re most recently Tanjam London. Um, so we would love for you to, to come by and, and audition this and let us know what you think, honestly what you think, because we're, we're trying to wrap up the audio stage, the amp stage right now, the audio circuit, and we think we're just about there, but we would love to know if there's anything you think should be changed with this. But what we're really excited about is the final production sample of the Liquid Spark. Um, you can see it here. It's a very architectural design, very structural design, and that's certainly something we were shooting for. Um, it is made of an aluminum and nickel alloy, which is very similar to the Duralumin that you'll find in Nacelle and Turn products. And then it is plated with a black chrome finish for anti-corrosive properties. And plus, it looks pretty darn good, at least we think. The amp itself uh, is the same discrete circuit that you've heard with one minor change. I don't necessarily want to get into that right now. But we would love for you to come and listen to it, check it out, play with it, and let us know what you think. Um, most importantly, we'd love to know if you think the amp has sounded better than previous inter incarnations, if you've heard those. But yes, definitely come by to our booth and check out the production ready Liquid Spark. Mr. Speakers will be sharing an exhibit with Cavalli Audio, so make sure to stop by and listen to his latest. These are fantastic headphones. This is the Planar Magnetic Ether Flow, and that is the closed version, the Ether C Flow. I wrote about these on HeadFi's forums. These are the latest versions of the Ether that were inspired by his work on an electrostatic headphone. And the improvements that he got from the Ether models, frankly, are fantastic. I think these are two of the finest values, the highest values in premium headphones, period. So make sure to give these a listen at the Mr. Speakers and Cavalli Audio exhibit. Now I mentioned that the Etherflow and the Ether C Flow planar magnetic headphones were products of the research that Dan Clark from Mr. Speakers had been doing as he developed his electrostatic headphone called the Ether ES. Now that electrostatic headphone a prototype of it anyway, I heard in Japan several months ago and it was very impressive, but that was an early prototype. Well, that Mr. Speaker's Ether ES electrostatic headphone will be a Can Jam at RMAF, the latest version. I haven't heard it yet, so I'm dying to hear it. And make sure you go there and hear it too. Uh, so again, Mr. Speaker's Ether Flow, Ether C Flow, and the electrostatic Mr. Speaker's Ether ES at the Cavalli Audio Mr. Speaker's exhibit. I wanted to make sure to point out that at this year's Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, there are actually two Can Jam areas. There's the main area that I mentioned earlier, the huge 210 foot by 60 foot exhibit area in front of the hotel. But make sure not to miss the other Can Jam area inside the hotel in the evergreen ENF ballrooms where there will be many more Can Jam exhibitors. Here are a few exhibitors who will be in the evergreen ENF ballrooms this year. Acoustic Research will be in the Evergreen ENF Can Jam area, and among other things, they'll be showing their new Acoustic Research ARM20 portable digital audio player. The ARM20 is the thinner, lighter sibling to their ARM2 player. This M20 just arrived, and so far I've been impressed with the build quality, the slimness and design, and of course the sound quality in early listening. The M20 uses a Burr Brown DAC, supports native sample rates with dual crystal oscillators, has a linear power supply, has Wi-Fi for support of third-party music streaming and downloading apps, and is expandable with a micro SD card slot. Make sure to visit AR's exhibit at the Evergreen ENF area to check out their new ARM20 player, and they'll probably have the ARM2 as well. Amps and Sound will be in the Evergreen ENF Can Jam area and look for their very cool line of tube amps. I dig Amps and Sound as they have a sort of old-fashioned classic audio flair. We have one of their Kenzie headphone amps right here and it's awesome, especially if you're a fan of the rich warm sound of DHT-SET amps and I'm one of those fans. 
Amson Sound will also be showing the Mogwai for when you still want that warm SET sound and more power. They'll have their upcoming Lilu amplifier, which is an EL84 single-ended headphone amp that can output 1 watt into headphones and 2.6 watts into speakers, and that's for someone who wants a more neutral-sounding tube amp. Amps and Sound will also be showing their flagship Agartha, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which uses 300B tubes, which I'm also very much looking forward to hearing. Final, who used to be known as Final Audio Design, will be in the Evergreen ENF CanJam area, and they usually bring a lot of wonderful gear to listen to. Among other things, I expect I'll have their new lineup of what they're calling the world's smallest earphones, the Final F7200, F4100, and F3100. As far as final in-ears go, these new F models are quite affordable, and they are indeed tiny. Look for other final in-ear models, too. I expect Final will also be exhibiting their full-size, and I do mean full-size, Sonorous family of over-ear headphones. The price range of the Sonorous line ranges from $329 for the Sonorous 2 up to nearly $5,000 for the Sonorous 10. This is the $329 Sonorous 2 and its $399 sibling, the Sonorous 3. Of the two, I prefer the richer sounding Sonorous 3, but both are solid, reasonably priced, full-sized over-ears. AudioQuest will be exhibiting in the Evergreen ENF CanJam area, and of course they'll have their Nighthawk headphones available to listen to. Also, I was told that a sneak peek of a new AudioQuest headphone will be given to those who ask, so make sure to stop by the AudioQuest exhibit and ask. AudioQuest will also be showing its AudioQuest Dragonfly thumb drive-sized USB DAC amps, the two latest models being the Dragonfly Black and the flagship Dragonfly Red. Of course, both Dragonflies will work well with your computers, but my favorite use case is with smartphones. If you want to kick your iPhone up into premium digital audio player performance levels, you get one of these. Seriously, smartphone owners, audition the Dragonflies at Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Again, these are just a few of the many exhibitors in the evergreen ENF Can Jam areas inside the main hotel at Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest 2016, so make sure not to miss the evergreen Can Jam ENF ballrooms. Stereo Pravda is coming from Moscow to join us at CanJam. Stereo Pravda's Misha Kucherenko will be showing his very unique in-ear monitors based on Misha's premise that in a multi-armature design, all drivers should share the same axis. His Spearphone's multi-armature in-ears come in four models ranging in price from $1,000 for a five-driver model to $2,500 for a seven-driver model. Getting seven drivers to share the same axis makes for a unique looking in-ear. I've heard prototypes of Misha's in-ears. It's worth a visit to Stereo Pravda's exhibit in CanJam, trust me. At the Abyss Headphones exhibit, Abyss will be showing their Planar Magnetic AB1266 headphones, of course, and they'll also be showing the Low 2 Paw Gold Diana Edition portable digital audio player. The Diana Edition is a Low 2 Paw Gold that has custom firmware created specifically for Abyss that enables higher gain and power capability. Of course, you can also see in here the standard Low 2 Paw Gold at the Beijing InfoMedia exhibit, also at CanJam. If you're an in-ear monitor user, make sure to stop by Comply's exhibit in the CanJam Evergreen ENF ballrooms to find the right tips for your IEMs. No matter which Universal Fit IEM you own, they probably offer Comply foam tips that fit it perfectly. Onkyo will have their very popular Onkyo DPX-1 portable digital audio player at CanJam. Reasonably priced, the DPX-1 has been a hot seller in our community due to the fact that it runs open Android, which allows for third-party software to be installed, like Tidal, for example. It's also one of only a couple of portable players I'm aware of that supports MQA decoding. Look for the Onkyo DPX-1 and other Onkyo products at their CanJam exhibit. RHA will be showing a few new products at CanJam at RMAF. They'll have their new DAC Amp L1 portable DAC and headphone amplifier with balanced output. The DAC Amp L1 uses dual ES9018K2M DAC chips and a Class AB amplifier for each stereo channel. It also has a stunning chassis design. They'll also have their new flagship in-ear monitor called the CL1 Ceramic. The CL1 Ceramic has ceramic housings and has a dual transducer design with one CL dynamic transducer and one ceramic plate driver per side. RHA will also be showing another new in-ear headphone called the CL750. Look for the DAC Amp L1, CL1 Ceramic, and CL750 at RHA's CanJam at RMAF exhibit. Rupert Neve Designs will be showing their RNHP headphone amplifier, which I think is the first standalone dedicated headphone amp designed by pro audio legend Rupert Neve. I picked up a few of these RNHPs, one of which has become part of our measurement rig, and a couple of other RNHPs to listen to music through. Visit Rupert Neve Designs exhibit at CanJam at RMAF. Ultrasone will be exhibiting at CanJam, and I imagine they'll have their very limited edition, Ultrasone Tribute 7. This is a lovely closed headphone that is, as its name suggests, a tribute to their classic Ultrasone Edition 7 headphones from 2004. Some fans feel the Edition 7 was the best headphone Ultrasone ever produced. If you're one of them, then the Tribute 7 is a must here as it shares the Edition 7's voicing. I expect Ultrasone will also have the rest of the Ultrasone headphone line available to listen to at CanJam at RMAF.
Sonoma Acoustics will be showing their Sonoma Model 1 electrostatic headphone system. The team at Sonoma includes key members of the team behind SACD and the Sonoma Digital Workstation. I heard a prototype of the electrostatic Sonoma Model 1 system at CanJam London, and it was impressive. Make sure to stop by the Sonoma Acoustics exhibit at CanJam at RMAF to hear it yourself. So again, that's just some of the many, many things you'll be able to hear and see at CanJam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest this year, October 7th through the 9th, 2016, at the Denver Marriott Tech Center Hotel in Denver, Colorado. So we'll see you in Denver, and I'll see you next time here on HeadFi TV.